The drainage network editor is the heart of the 12D drainage system. We'll select the network editor off the drainage menu. And you'll notice that as we move from tab to tab, that absolutely nothing is active inside the panel. We're completely locked out. If you notice in the bottom left hand corner, it's saying that it wants to select a drainage line first. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, is pick one of the drainage strings and accept it. The moment I pick the drainage string, the entire network comes to life. The first thing we'll talk about inside the network is how to move around from manhole to manhole. First of all, when I'm on the global tab, I cannot use my next or previous buttons because I'm working globally on the entire network. If I move to the defaults, the defaults apply to the network as well, so I still don't have my next and previous buttons. However, this moment I go to my catchment, pit, or pipe tabs, my next and previous buttons now work on my views. So, if I select next, it moves in the direction of chainage down to the next manhole, and you'll notice as it moves, it's got a large circle indicating the manhole that's currently being edited, it's got an arrow pointing to the pipe that's currently being edited, and that arrow also indicates the direction of flow. When I go to the next pit, you'll notice that the screen automatically pans so that the manhole is always on the plan view, and that will take place on any plan view where the network is drawn. The next thing we're going to do is to use the pick button. You can more than welcome at any time to use the pick button to go re-pick another manhole to move directly to that. The next option you have is the drop down. The drop down allows you to pick which manhole you want to go to. Now we have not assigned any pit names right now, so it's very little use to know which one you're going to pick, but if I was to try one, it would just be potluck which one I'd wind up on. Once we set, have set pit names done, it'll make far more sense. In order to demonstrate the next features, we're going to have to have a section view. So we'll move up to View, New, and create a section view. So I can clearly see my information. I'm going to do a window, Tile Vertical, and you'll now see that I can see all three views. Now. What I'd like to do is to profile one of my drainage strings. I'm going to move my drainage menu a little bit out of the way, and I'm finished with my points edit for a while. To, to profile a drainage string, I'm going to use the Profile button, come across, and pick my drainage string. Continually snapping until I find the string I want, middle mouse to accept. You'll notice that this string has already has a vertical profile on it. Now we're going to change this vertical profile in a moment. When I select next and previous, you'll notice that that circle also moves in the section view as well. If I move on to next again, you'll notice that the section view automatically reprofiles to take me on to the next string. Now, these settings, this auto panning, auto profiling are happening because of these three buttons down here. The auto apply that means that any change that I put inside my panel means I do not have to push the apply button. The auto profile button, that's what was causing this to automatically change. The auto redraw button is what had me automatically panning inside my plan view. If you didn't want any of these to happen, you're more than welcome to turn off these features. To demonstrate what our set pit details button does for us, it would be easier if we use the original layout that we read in from our drawing package. So I'm going to go to minus and turn off the drainage 12D, go back to the plus and add on to the one called drainage. Now I'd like to go profile one of these, so once again I'm going to go profile and go pick my drainage string. There it is there and accept it. Now this one that has been brought in from AutoCAD has no levels at all, and they're all sitting around a height of zero. If I'd like to put elevations onto the covers of my pits, I can hit the Set Pit Details button. But first, I'm going to have to pick that network. So I've selected the network, Set Pit Details, and it's complaining that I don't have a finished surface tin. So I'm going to go across and pick my combined tin, and once again, go Set Pit Details. 
So now it's complaining that I need an existing tin. And now that I have all my tins specified, I can go set pit details. And I will now have cover levels for my pits. You'll notice then when, when we used the set pit details button, that it was only the cover levels that were adjusted for our drainage network. If we'd like our inverts to be adjusted, we have to come back and select the regrade pipes button. What the regrade pipes button does is moves throughout the network to ensure that we have the proper cover on top of our pipes. The other thing it does is it goes and checks to make sure that the uh, branch lines coming in, it checks their invert lines to make sure that the trunk line is low enough to pick those up. So simply by selecting the regrade pipes, our entire network has been regraded. If you were interested in checking the cover that was assigned by 12D, we could move up to tins, come down to inquire, and we could look at our depth from string. The tin we'd be concerned with, of course, is our combined, and the string we're currently going to inquire on is the trunk line. Now anywhere that I point to on that string, the panel will give me the invert elevation, sorry, the, the depth at the invert, the depth to the center, and the depth to the obvert. And if you recall, we set our obvert depth at cover of being 0.65 as a minimum. And that's currently what we have across our pits. Now, if the pipe had to be moved down lower in order to pick up one of our branch lines coming in, then we would find that that cover would be temporarily increased. Now that we've finished demonstrating the set pit details and regrade pipe options, I'm going to turn off that network drainage and bring back our drainage dot forward 12D line and I'm going to go pick that network instead. For the rest of this training session, we'll be working with the drainage 12D and leaving behind the plain drainage one. Just so I don't forget, I'm also going to go reprofile my drainage 12D line to remind myself that this is the network that we're using. Now we looked before with this drop down and found that it was very difficult to move to another manhole because they were all called MH. So now we're going to go to set pit names to assign names to all the manholes. We have several different naming conventions to use inside 12D and I'm going to use this drop down and start off by using sequential numbering. And I'm going to go run that. Now you'll notice it tells me that I have a non-unique string name. I have two string twos inside my network. Because 12D uses the string name to determine the order the pits are numbered, they must be unique. So I'm going to go back to the editor to fix this. Now, moving across to either my catchment pit or pipe tab, I have access to the string names. So the first thing I see is that string number one is defined here as my long section, so my longest line. And you'll see that as I move inside section, I, section view, I can see a crosshair moving in plan. So that's definitely that string. I'm going to go next to go to my next one. There's a string two. Okay, that's my short one across there. If I go to the next one, there's a string two across there as well. Now, previously, I thought that we had joined that, but let's go back and do a join on that again. So in order to do a join, any type of plan editing, I'm going to have to finish my network editor. The network editor locks all of the strings while it's open. So now I'm going to do my split join. And once again, joining downstream to upstream, I'm first going to pick my downstream pipe. And then I'm going to go pick my upstream pipe. And the two have been joined together. Now that's the reason I had two string number twos. If I was to go back now once again to my network editor, go and pick that string, and go back to set pit names. Once again, I'm going to change that again to sequential numbering and select run. It's successful, and you'll see that each one of our structures has a unique pit name. The advantage to doing this, now if I hit the drop down, I can move to any one of the structures listed. Now we're going to be working mostly with the network for the next while, so I'm going to turn off all of these road strings, selecting the first one, holding the shift, selecting the last one, then going to select 
so that all I'm looking at is just my drainage network. Also, I'm going to put these into a horizontal view. I'm going to minimize my perspective view and then do a window tile horizontal. Now, the reason I minimized my perspective view first was so that it would not be one of the views that was resized. So now I'm going to go reprofile my long section. And you'll notice that in this one, that there are some branch lines coming in where the trunk line is not low enough. Once again, to fix that up, we simply go regrade pipes and the system is reanalyzed. If we move down previous, you'll see now that it's come down to pick up that branch line. The next feature we're going to use is to set the pit names according to their pit types. To do this, we're going to have to change the pit type for a couple of our pits. First of all, let's move down to pit number three. I'm going to use the pick button for that. So I'm going to select pit, come down and select number three. And this one, we're going to change it from a pit type of AL2D down to a manhole. Next one we're going to do is our outlet. So I'm going to use the drop down and select pit number six and I'm going to change that type from an AL2D into a head wall. Now that we have three different pit types inside our network, we're going to go and set pit names again. Now what happens is that everything that is not specifically named inside our pit naming file will use this system. So we're going to specifically tell 12D how to name the head walls and the manholes. Now this is going to go in a file called pit names and then we're going to go open this one up and the first thing we have to do is enter the pit types. So the first pit type we're going to customize is the manhole. Now we want that to have the pretext MH and we'd like to have its own separate group for sequencing, so sequence number one, so that it will be numbered independently of the other pits. Now to add a new line to this, I'm just going to hit enter on my last field and I'm going to do the same thing again. Hit the browse button and go down to the head walls. Now the pretext for this one is going to be HW for head wall and I'm going to ask this to have a separate group so that once again it starts at pit number one. I'm going to write this out. Yes, so overwrite it and select finish. Now, the other feature I'd like to have is instead of these being called manhole one, sorry, inlet one and two, I'm going to change this so that it has two decimal points in it, sorry, two, de two digits, and I'm going to come up here and have it so that it has a pretext, I for inlet. Now, we'll go run that, and you'll notice that we have an I01, an I02, now we'll come back to talk about this junction pit in a moment. IO3, IO4, 5, and 6. And of course, head wall 1. Anytime you have a junction pit, it looks a bit of a mess for a moment, but as soon as you go back to your network editor, you'll note and do a redraw for zooming in and out, you'll see that it's been cleared up and it is called manhole 1. Now these labels that you're looking at are the automatic string text. Later, we're going to look at a method for labeling these where we can control the location, the size, and color of those labels. It is possible that you set your pit names and cannot see them on the plan view. If you go to your toggle button, it's possible to toggle your text off, in which case you won't see any text at all. Toggling your text on is a quick fix to this. It's also possible to turn your text on and off for an individual model. So select the toggle again, come down to text, do not click on text, but walk right. A model list will show up and if you wanted to, you could turn your text off for one model. Now this is a trap for new users because if you go to the toggle, it looks like the text is turned on. However, when you go to the right, it's been turned off for that particular model. For now, I'm going to turn that back on. We are now going to create labels that can be placed exactly where you'd like them. 
We're going to do this by moving to the Plot button and selecting a plot parameter file for our plan plots. To do this, I'm going to select the folder icon, move into the library, and select Drainage Simple. At this time, we're not going to do any long section plottings, so I'm going to turn that off. Now, this, these labels are going to a model called Drainage 12D Labels. So I'm going to select Plot. Now I'm going to add on that model called Drainage 12D Labels. Now, with this simple labeling, what we have is the size of our pipes, an arrow showing the direction of flow, and the manhole name with a bubble shown around it. Inlet 01, Inlet 02, Manhole 1. So, very simple labeling. However, if we'd like to move these labels around, we can put them to a new location. So, if I was to go up to Drafting and come down to Multi String Translate, I can select Group. Now, the advantage of using the Group command is that although I'm only picking one string and moving it, two strings will move at once. So, pick a new location, and it's moved. Now, if I go and leave off this tick box and go replot it, these new labels would have been updated to the new names, but they remain in their moved or customized location. If I go back and turn on this full clean, which is not required, and do a plot, you'll see that these are snapped back to the original calculated positions. A second option for moving your text is to use the CAD toolbar. Move across to the ABC and do a drag, but not a click, all the way out until you get to the four pointed arrow. We're now going to move down to our plan drawing and move a single piece of text. I'm going to select the text, middle mouse to accept, and then move it to its new location. Select middle mouse to accept. Now, once again, that works wonderfully if you only have one piece of text to move. However, if you are planning on moving two pieces of text as a group, once again, for that, you would use your drafting multi string translate. The other feature that's handy when you're moving text is to use your text snap. If you have your text snap on, that's the X up here, it allows you to pick the text anywhere within the word. Whereas if it's turned off, you have to pick the insertion point of the piece of text. The insertion point can often be a long ways away from the text, so we recommend that you turn your text snap on whenever you're selecting a piece of text.